Next, we look at our second application, limit analysis, or factor of safety calculation. Let's consider a truss with a wind load pattern, a roof truss with a wind load pattern. Let P be the design wind load. Uh, let's ask the question, what is the factor of safety? Or in other words, how much can we scale this load P before the truss fails? So the scale factor is S, so the scaled load is S times P, and the question is find S. So there are some assumptions we make. Um, first, every member has a certain capacity Fy. Each member has a different capacity, and the symbol Y stands for yield. And when this capacity is reached, the member deforms indefinitely at this level of force. And this is a reasonable assumption because for a material like steel, we've seen, seen the stress-strain curve, which has uh, a pretty big plateau sometime, most of the time. And you can see that um, this um, will result in the constraint that the absolute value of F is less than or equal to Fy. The second assumption is we ignore elastic deformations because they're very small compared to the plastic deformations. And exactly this assumption is actually implied by the dual optimization problem, just something to keep in mind. So how can we formulate the limit analysis problem as an optimization problem? First, we, we want to maximize the scale factor S because we want to see what is the largest scale factor that can be applied while still maintaining equilibrium. So B transpose F equals S times P, that's equilibrium. And while all the members are at or below capacity. So F, absolute value of F less than or equal to Fy for each member. So this constraint, absolute value of F less than or equal to Fy can be visualized in this way and can actually be written as two constraints, F less than or equal to Fy and minus F less than or equal to Fy, which is one minus one times F less than or equal to Fy. So these capacity constraints, we can assemble for all the members of the truss by forming this matrix phi with uh, the one minus one in the block diagonal. And the Fy, um, Fy, Fy for member one and so on, Fy, Fy for member m, we'll call this the capacity vector. So if we write phi times f less than or equal to c, that uh, is the capacity constraint for all the members. So now maximize s can be written as minimize minus s, and then b transpose f equals sp can be rewritten in that way, and then we have the capacity constraint. We realize that this is a linear program. And the decision variable consists of f and s. Um, this is the limit analysis problem, and you're asked to explore the dual of this problem in the assignment.